We learn by mistakes, and God knows I've made my share of mistakes in flipping houses. So let me share with you the top five mistakes that we see people make all the time when flipping houses. So hopefully you can avoid them. I'm gonna go from fifth to first, and first is very important, so stick with me through all five of them. Ready, here we go. Five is not starting the job ASAP. In other words, when you get that property under contract and you are getting ready to close, you should be ready day one to start that job. If you don't, so many people take so much time to, well, let me go look at the house, let me show my family the house, let me go visit it, let me go think about stuff. Oh my God, get on the job. Start the job day one, because every day costs you money. Every single day, and the longer you wait, the longer you're gonna put yourself in jeopardy because the market might change. And also, it costs you money every single day you own a house. So starting the job ASAP is number one. Make sure you're starting that job immediately. That's one of the mistakes we see. Number four is the do-it-yourselfer. The person that says, I'm gonna go out and do all the work myself because I can save so much money. This ties back to the last one I just said. You will not save money because it will take you longer to do the job. As real estate investors, we make our money when we buy real estate. Your job, the most per hour you should be making is when you're out looking for new deals. That's where you make money as a real estate investor. Hire other people to do the work. When you think you're saving money doing it yourself, you never are. It looks good on paper, but in reality, when you think about the holding costs and the exposure you have and your actual time, if you value your own time, you're not making any more money, you're probably making less. Number three, not having a scope of work prepared. So many people start a job and don't have a scope of work prepared. They don't have a plan for their renovation. You have to have a plan for your renovation to be successful. If you're not, if you're just trying to wing it from the hip every time, you're like, well, I'll do this, I'll do that. Let me try to take that wall down. Let me move this over here. If you don't have a plan for your job, you will fail. That job will take too long. It'll be confusing. You'll confuse your contractors. You'll confuse people that work for you. And it will not be a successful flip. So, to be successful, make sure that you have a scope of work in place. Don't ever start a job without having a detailed plan of how you're gonna start that job. Next, managing the job. The number two reason is uh, that people make mistakes is make sure that you're managing the job start to finish. In other words, when you start that job, start, like I said before, start day one with the project. Then, manage your contractor daily. I mean, manage those people so you know exactly what's happening. Don't leave the job for a week or two and expect they're gonna get the work done. Make sure that the material is ordered. Make sure that the subcontractors are lined up. Make sure, you have to manage that like a boss. You're talking about making 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars on a flip. Treat it like that. Because if you manage it like a boss, you'll get paid like a boss. If you manage it like a wimp, you'll get paid like a wimp. So make sure you manage that job in every aspect of the job, from holding costs, to contractors, to material, to delivery, and even when you sell the house. The whole process when you hire the realtor, all of that is very important. And the number one mistake that so many people make in real estate when flipping houses, they pay way too much for the house. This happens over and over and I wanna wring people's neck. I see them paying so much money for a house. You can't overpay for a house. At our home flipping workshop, we teach people how to use a home flipping evaluator. That's a step-by-step -step guide that has a calculated numbers on there that lets them know what their Mayo is. Now, Mayo stands for Maximum Allowable Offer. M-A-O, Mayo, Maximum Allowable Offer. That means when you do the calculation, how much could I max, what's the maximum I could offer and still give myself a profit, minimize my risk, and cover all my costs that I'm gonna have for the house. If you use that calculation, it comes up with a number. Listen, math doesn't lie, numbers don't lie. So when you come up with that number, don't go over it. What rookies do is that they get very emotional, especially in today's market. They get overbid, they get very excited, and they think they're winning. Well, by winning the bid and paying too much, you're actually losing. So make sure when you're winning, you're sticking to your numbers. Don't buy with emotion. I know it's excited. I know you want to get the job. I know you just want to get the first one. And then you start telling yourself stories like, yeah, but if I just, if I can just get my first one on my belt, I don't care if I make money or not. You will, because you don't want to do all that work and make nothing or lose money. So make sure you're sticking to your numbers. Once you go up with the number, remember, the numbers don't lie. The math doesn't lie. So make sure that you're using those numbers. And those are the top five mistakes that we've made and we've seen other rookies make, and I want to help you not make them. So, Avoid those mistakes.